Hello folks, this is Piano Man Steve Lundgren, founder of LearningMusicIsFun.com, where we teach piano players to play rock, pop, and country music. Thanks for tuning in. This is my tutorial for Good Hearted Woman by Waylon Jennings. Now, what's fun about a song like this is that there wasn't really a piano part per se. Uh, there might have been a piano in there, but it's not really a piano-centered song. So what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you the chord progression and I'm going to teach you a couple of rhythm patterns that I've developed that will help create the essence of this song so that you can play it as a piano player by yourself and it doesn't matter that you don't have drums, bass, and electric and acoustic guitar going on and steel guitar and whatever else they had happening. So, pretty cool stuff. Basically, uh, we're in the key of D for most of the song and then there's a key change to the key of E and we just kind of work our way through the one, four, and five chords, meaning in the key of D we're going to play a D chord, a G chord, and then we're going to play an A7 chord. So, Okay, so let me show you this first rhythm pattern. It looks like this. Okay, so what am I doing here? Well, in the left hand, you're pretty much just going to be playing D, A, D, A. So if you think of the tempos, one, two, three, four, one, two, well, actually, let's slow it down a bit. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you're going back and forth between the one and the five of the chord that you're playing in the left hand on counts one, and three. One, two, three, four. So D, two, three, A, four. D, two, A, four. D, two, A, four. And in the right hand, what we're going to do is we're going to play a little power chord, and it's going to be arpeggiated. A power chord is when you play the one and the five, but you don't include a three. So, here we're going to voice it with A and D like this. This is middle C, so we're going to play an A below middle C, and it's going to be one, two, and. One, two, and. This is not a song that has shuffle in it. This is very straight. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one, two, and three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and so that's what's going on. So as you get faster with that, it eventually looks like this. Notice how it almost creates the, the feel of a horse galloping. So when it finally changes to G, now we're going to play a G power chord. Now down here you've got G, D, G, D, because that's the 1 and the 5, right? And your power chord's the 1 and the 5, so we're going to take the path of least resistance. We were here, now we're going to be here. So G to D. Then we go to an A chord, and again we take the path of least resistance. We moved our right hand up one whole step and we're down to A, E. And down here we're on A and E as well. Then we're right back to a D chord. Okay. And then you just run through that whole thing again. The second thing is that when you get to the chorus of the song, we want to change the rhythm pattern to this. So what am I doing? I'm continuing with the same thing I've been doing in the left hand, which is just 
alternating back between the one and the five of whatever chord. So D, A, D, A, D, A, D, A, G, D, G, D, G, D, G, D, A, E, A, E, A, E, A, E, D, A. Pretty straightforward. In the right hand now, I'm taking the full D chord, or whatever chord I'm on, and we play one, two, and three, four. So one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. I like to think of it like this. Hot, tater, cold, beer. Hot, tater, cold, beer. Hot, tater, cold, beer. So I'm playing it in this particular inversion. A, D, F sharp. She's a good heart. to a G chord and you're, I'm just going to take again the path of least resistance. I was here, A, D, F sharp. The closest G chord is right here, B, D, G. C. Then I go to an A7 chord, so I play A, C sharp, E, G. Again, why is that? Because from where I was, this is the path of least resistance. I moved the least amount to get to it. Boom. Right back to D. And notice how simple it is to move from here to here. That's why it's good to learn all your chord inversions and practice moving around in them because, boy, you know, you can get these great sounds and it's so smooth because you never have to move your hand that far. It's the only thing you ever might want to throw into your right hand is when you're coming out of an A chord. Then go to a D chord. Three, four, one, two. You can go D, A, B, C sharp, D, D, A, B, C sharp, D. Just a little pickup into the next into the next phrase. So the reason that we change to a different rhythm pattern here during the chorus is that it gives us more intensity. So it's like we have this really laid back thing. If you listen to that recording, it starts out and the volume's a little lower, and then they kind of pick it up during the during the chorus, and then it lays back again. So again, same exact chord progression and everything. So just watch me play all the way through the first verse and the first chorus, so you can see how this kind of patches together. We start out, the intro is just kind of vamping on D here for a few measures, so it's like... So it's like one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two. Now we start, this is the verse. Very nice, just kind of gives you two different
flavors and textures there because there is a different one when you get to the chorus. So you just do that twice and then at the end of uh, the second chorus you say, oh, Good hearted woman, low with a good time and man, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, um, da 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 She's a good heart. Now, this isn't necessarily in the recording, but anytime I've ever heard Waylon Jennings perform this, he usually did a key change. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Just on three, it comes down on a D chord, three. Four. And then on one, we've got to do the same thing we were doing during the chorus in D on E. So we play an E chord. So E, B, E, B, E, B. Because why? Because B is the five in an E chord. So E, B, and here we're playing a B chord here. B, E, G sharp. So then we move to an A chord, so that's C-sharp, E, A, and we know that down here it's A, E. Then we move to a B7 chord, so we have B, F-sharp, B, F-sharp in the left hand. We're going to play B, D-sharp, F-sharp, A to get that B7. to E. And that little maneuver here, E, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. again and do a little tag. Good hearted woman, love with a good time and man. Okay, so just a little little tag. Good hearted woman, love with a good time and man. And then I like to go So just E chord, A chord, then E chord, E, B, B. In the left hand, you're just going E, B, A, E, E, B, E, B, A. And in the right hand, it's just E chord, E chord, E chord, A chord. know how you lay out there and just let me play that even slower this is the tag that at the end So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to play all the way through the song with the key change and, and end it. We're going to do one chorus after the key change, and then I'm going to do the little final tag there and then the little end out that I showed you. So you can see how this all gets put together and becomes the whole song. So we're in the key of D. This is where the verse would start. Here's the 
chorus. So really it's just a matter of learning like, you know, three chords. If you put the key change in there, you gotta know six chords. You gotta know D major, G major, A7. Actually only five chords, because then you play A and the E when you change up to the key of E. So then you gotta know E, A, and B7. And voila, you got yourself a song just by knowing these two little country rhythm patterns. It's really, really fun stuff. Great tune and uh, that creates all the dynamic shift that you need. So, anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed learning from this as much as I've enjoyed teaching it. I will be back with lots of new stuff here in the coming days, weeks, months, years, etc., etc. And I want to remind you before I sign out to make sure you're having fun when you do this because my prime directive is very simple. If you're not having fun when you're making music, you're doing it wrong. This is Piano Man Steve Lunger, and thanks so much for tuning in, and come visit us at learningmusicisfun.com sometime.